Hi there, Couch Potato Mike here. The following video you are about to watch may contain scenes and language of an adult nature. So if you are under the age of 18, please refrain from watching. Go get your mom, let her watch. <laughs> uh, but you go watch one of my Funko Pop unboxing videos or me playing Grand Theft Auto 3. Because nobody seems to be watching those videos. But hey, what you gonna do? Viewer discretion is advised. Kids gone yet? Good, because hey, what is up? This is Couch Potato Mike, and I am back in the book club bringing to you chapter 15 of Freed. Yeah, I don't know where my brain was last time, guys. Chapter 15 of Freed uh, by E.L. James, which is Fifty Shades Freed is told by Christian. Hopefully you know that by now. Uh, we've been having some fun with this, but before we get into the book, I want to remind you guys to subscribe. There's only a small percentage of the people that actually watch these videos are subscribed, so how about it? You like it, I like it, it helps me out, it makes me happy, it'll make you happy. Plus, if you don't like it, you can get your money back. And remember to ring the bell, because ringing the bell lets you know when these are coming out. They don't come out every day. I try to get them out every day, but life happens, guys. Also, give me a thumbs up like the video it helps out with the youtube algorithm now that i'm done begging for your approval let's move right into chapter 15 of freed i lost my bookmark which just happens to take place on tuesday july the 26th of 2011 i hang up for my call with troy wellen my banker I've set up a joint account for me and Anna that will go live once she's Mrs. Anastasia Gray. I'm not sure what she'll ever need it for, but if something ever happens, geez, if something happens to her. My phone buzzes, distracting me from a slew of dark thoughts. Mr. Gray, I have your mother on the line, Andrea says. I suppress a groan, put her through. Will do. Here you go, sir. Grace, darling, how are you? I'm good. What is it? Always so brusque. I'm checking up on you, that's all. I'll talk to Anna more than... I talk to Anna more than you do. Sorry, guys. I just woke up. I'm checking up on you, that's all. I talk to Anna more than you these days. Well, I'm good. Still here. Still getting married. Thank you for all that you've done. Is there anything specific you want? She sighs. No, darling. I'm looking forward to the rehearsal dinner and having Anna stay with us the night before the wedding. And, of course, her mother and her stepfather, Bob, too. I'm glad we're meeting them before the big day. Are they all on good terms with her dad? With Ray? I think so, but I don't know. You'll need to ask Anna. I'll do that. I'm glad he's staying with you. It was not my idea. <clears throat> Anna is hoping that we'll bond. Frankly, Raymond still intimidates me. Grace pauses. I'm sure you will. Do you have a marriage license? I scoff. Of course we do. We picked it up last week. Honeymoon? It's all arranged. And you'll suit. I direct my eye roll at the phone. It was delivered today. It fits. Rings? Rings? Shit. Rings! How the hell did we forget about rings? In hand. I mutter and laugh because both Anna and I have overlooked the rings. What's so funny? Nothing, Mom. Anything else? You forgot the rings. I sigh, busted. How did you know? I'm your mother, and you called me Mom. You rarely do that. The humor and warmth in her vo voice is soothing. Perceptive, Dr. Gray. She chuckles. Oh, Christian, I love you so much. If you don't have rings, you'd better get some. Everything here is on track. The pavilion goes up tomorrow, and the decorators will follow. Thanks, Mom. Thanks for everything. See you Friday. She hangs up, and I stare out at the Seattle skyline, grateful to all that is holy for Dr. Grace Trevelyan Gray. Mom. I call Anna. Anastasia Steele? She sounds distracted. We forgot the rings. Rings? Oh, rings! I laugh because her reaction is the same as mine, and I can imagine in her, and I can imagine her widening eyes in shock. I know. How could we forget? My mom always says the devil's in the details, and it agrees. She's not wrong. What sort of rings would you like? Oh, um, I thought a platinum band to match your engagement ring. Christian, that would be uh that um, 
That would be more than mighty fine, her voice is a whisper. I smile. I'll get matching ones. She gasps. You'll wear one too? Why wouldn't I? I'm surprised by her question. I don't know. I'm, I'm thrilled that you would. Anna, I'm yours. I want the world to know. I'm very pleased to hear that. You should know this by now. I do know, she whispers. It still gives me all the feels when you say it. The feels? She giggles. Yes, the feels. Sounds painful. No, it's the opposite of painful. My heart soars. Sometimes she takes my breath away. I swallow, trying to contain my elation. I'd better get right on this. You better. Laters, baby. Laters, Christian. I love you. I let her words settle into my heart. She loves me. Are you going to hang up? She asks. No. She laughs. I have to go. I have a meeting with my boss's boss's boss, you know. Yeah, he can be an asshole. He can, but he can also be the best of men. I'm staring at her portrait on my office wall. Her shy, teasing smile is directed at me. My body and my soul stir. This has to be one of the sweetest things she's ever said to me. I'll see you tonight, she says, and the line goes dead before I have a chance to respond. Anastasia Steele, you are the most disarming woman I know. I stare at her photograph, digesting her words, and I know my smile would light up a dark and soulless night. Feeling inspired, I find the number for a story of fine jewelry and press call. It's not only rings I need, but a wedding present for my future wife, too. My meeting with Welch is inconclusive. There's still no lead on the perpetrator, and I'm beginning to believe the sabotage is a figment of my overactive imagination. Welch's team is drilling down into all ex-employee records of the companies that GEH has acquired to see if he can find something. But we've been over the ground, and I think he's grasping at straws. The only potential suspects we had were Hyde and Woods, and but Hyde has been discounted, and as he's been in Florida since he was fired, and there's no evidence that links Woods to the crash yet. I know how exasperating this is for you, Mr. Gray. Welch says, his voice as gruff as ever, We are keeping an extra watchful eye on the Gulf Stream. I'm wondering if we're overreacting to the to the FAA report. No, we did not. Not where your safety is concerned. We'll just have to be patient for the NTSB report. I'm expecting it any day. As soon as you have it, I let the sentence finish itself. Yes, sir. In the meantime, please liaise with Taylor. He's coming up with so he's coming with us to oversee our security while we're on our honeymoon. Will do. And congratulations once again. I nod my thanks. Okay, that's it. Thanks for coming in. Welch rises and we shake hands. Back at my desk, I check my emails. From Dr. John Flynn, subject FW for Christian Gray, date July 26, 2011, 1453 to Christian Gray. Christian, I've received the attached from Layla Williams. We can discuss it when I see you on Thursday, JF. From Layla Williams, from Christian Gray, date Ju July 2016, 2016, 632 EST, to Dr. John Flynn. Dearest John, thanks for your continued support. I cannot begin to tell you what it has meant to me. My parents have embraced me back into the fold. I can hardly believe that how considerate they've been, given all the trouble I've caused them. My divorce from my husband should be final next month. At least I'll be able to move on with my life. My only regret is that I haven't been able to thank Mr. Gray in person. Please pass on this note to him. I would really like to deliver my thanks personally. My life could have been taken such a bad turn if not for his and your intervention. Many thanks, Layla. No fucking way. Layla is the last person in the world I want to see but I'm glad she's in a better place in healing. The divorcing and, and divorcing the cockroach she married. I delete the email and resolve to push her from my mind. I buzz Andrea. I need coffee. Stat. Good idea. It's late. 
The sun has sunk beneath the horizon, and I'm staring at a blank screen of my study. Vows. Drafting, it, drafting them is trickier than I thought. Everything I write will be spoken aloud in front of our nearest and dearest, and I'm trying to find the words to express to Anna how I feel about her, how excited I am to share our life together, and how honored I am that she's chosen me. Damn it, this is hard. My thoughts strayed earlier this evening when Anna and I met with Gia Matteo. Gia wanted our feedback and a few ideas for the new house. Her vision is bold. I like the approach, but I'm not sure that Anna is entirely on board. When we eventually see Gia's drawn-up plans, we'll be able to judge. Fortunately, the meeting was brief, and she touched me once more. That's all. Since then, I've been attempting to write my vows while Anna's been on call with Alondra Gutierrez. They've each been working tirelessly on this wedding. She grins. Her eyes... Wait a minute. Sorry, guys. The page is stuck together. <sighs> They've each been working tirelessly on this wedding. I just hope it will be everything Anna wants. And frankly, as long as Anna's happy, I'm happy. But most of all, I want to keep her safe. Life without Anna would be unbearable. A flurry of images flash unwelcome through my brain. Anna at gunpoint in her old apartment. Anna, not raw, seated beside me as Charlie Tango drops to the ground. Anna, lying pale and unmoving on a squalid, once-green rug. Gray, stop. Stop! <sighs> I need to get a handle on my morbid thoughts. Concentrate, Gray. Focus on where you want to be. With Anna. I want to give her the world. I turn my back to my screen, to my vows, and start to type. Anna looks up when I enter the library and gives me a sweet but tired smile. She's been reading a manuscript. Hi. Hi, she answers, and I sit down in the armchair beside her and open my arms. She doesn't hesitate. She uncurls her long legs from beneath her and hops over to me, complete with the manuscript, and crawls into my lap. Wrapping her in my arms, I kiss the top of her head and breathe in her scent. She is heaven on earth. Anna lets out a soft, contented sigh. She's so good to hold. A balm to my senses, my Anna. We sit in a comfortable, companionable silence. I could never have imagined doing this even three months ago. No, two months ago. I've changed beyond recognition. The residue of doubt and fear I felt earlier melts away. She's safe in my arms, and I'm safe with her. Ah, another short one, but a good one, guys. You know, in Fifty Shades... Uh, freed they don't touch on how much and I do mean how much because it seems like a constant thing going on the, uh, that they actually uh, do go over all the possible suspects of everything that went on you just hear a little about it and then you hear the final truth of course it's from Anna's point of view and he's keeping a lot of stuff from Anna even at this point because he doesn't want her to worry so in his mind, he's being a great and, and good and responsible fiancé. In her mind, she's probably irritated that she's not knowing as much as a fact. In fact, I know pretty much that's how she felt. She doesn't like being kept in the dark. But this is moving right along. The next chapter is going to be on a Thursday, and we know the wedding is that weekend, so <laughs> we got a couple more chapters, and uh, Mr. and Mrs. Gray will be Mr. and Mrs. Gray, so... Until then, uh, this is Couch Potato Mike reminding you guys that in the end we're all stories, so let's make them good ones. See you next time, guys.